Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones. Last time, we fought off a bunch of undead monsters and met a bunch of weirdos, to put it bluntly. So this time we had to save a few at long last. An ominous wave of dark creatures washes over the continent. What was that voice I'm doing for this narration? Erica's journey to find her brother Ephraim grows ever more perilous, still she presses on despite the danger. Her will is strong. The town of Seraphim, located on the border of Renai and Grotto. The people of both countries have long used the town as a meeting place. It stands as testimony to the friendship the two nations have shared these many years. Now, however, Seraphim is teeming with Grotto troops. So this is considered one of the hardest chapters up to this point in the game. The Empire's Reach. Well, it makes sense though, because we're entering the heart of the Empire. Of course it's going to be difficult, right? Wrong, because it gets more complicated. Well, well, there's an arena in this town. Perfect, my pocket's feeling a bit light. Say, is that a cleric? It is, and a gorgeous one at that. Something amiss, sister? You look flustered. Ah! P pardon me? No, pardon me? I never meant to startle you. May I offer my apologies? No, it's not necessary, it was my fault. Excuse me, I must be going. Good day to you. And there she goes. She's quite the beauty, too. Ah, oh, such is life. I think I have time to still visit the arena, though. Have to solve the Seraphim border guard. How fair are you? I bring orders from His Majesty. Rumor has it that Princess Erica of Renai is making her way to Grotto. You are to find her and to place her in custody immediately. Yes, sire. Yes, sir. One more thing, a traitor to the Empire has fled Castle Grotto. You've received reports she's hiding somewhere in Seraphim. I don't care if you have to tear this town apart. Find the turncoat. Yes, sir, Glenn. General Glenn. If she was this, do we have permission to execute her? Yes, permission granted. Understood. Grotto's will be done. The Grand Empire will repay the debt of betrayal with blood. His Majesty relies upon you, Captain. Be sure his trust is not misplaced. That is all. Yes, sire. Glenn really isn't feeling it, I can tell. Such loyalty to the crown. If only I could hold such conviction in the righteousness of our Emperor. Something troubling you, brother? No, pay me no mind. Pay no mind to me. Come, Comrag, let's go. From here we ride northeast, back to the fort. Very well. It's been so long since I last visited Seraphim. My brother and I used to pass through here en route to Grotto. I remember the harmony in which the people of both countries lived. No walls divided their borders, no soldiers stood guard in high towers. This border town, it was to me a symbol of the trust between Grotto and Renai. And now it is firmly under the thumb of Grotto's emperor. The peace I remember in the city seems like something from another time. It seems lost now, forever. The city doesn't seem to be very heavily patrolled. You must feel it's not worth guarding with Castle and I under their control. We must try to not draw attention to ourselves. The West Gate is unmanned. Undermanned. Pardon me, may I ask a question? Oh, wrong voice. I thought it was going to be the cleric. What is it? I'm looking for someone. Have you seen a young girl with indigo hair? Indigo hair? No, sorry, except we totally have someone like that in a party. Thank you. Sorry to intrude. There's something very odd about that man, wouldn't you say? It did seem unusual, but he didn't strike me as a grotto spy. But... Kasha, don't let her escape! That way, she went that way! What's that? It's coming from over there. So let's see what the commotion is. Traitor Natasha, surrender peacefully. Come quietly and you may have the chance to explain yourself before his majesty. Wait, please, you must listen to me. Take her! No, you must believe me. The Emperor saw himself. You must be able to see that. Impune the Emperor at your own peril. You've been ordered to execute you and if you offer any resistance. But your words condemn you. Oh, snap. That cleric is a traitor to the throne of Grotto. What madness is this? Ah, are we alright? Who are you? I'm from Nai. Why this... Grotto men after you. You're from Nai. Oh, oh, I have something I must tell you. It's about Grotto. 
Wait, ground soldiers are coming this way. We'll have to talk later. Now we must fight. So, Natasha is a forced character, so we're dropping, uh, Arthur this time. We're actually gonna throw in Seth, which you may be thinking, but didn't you just rag on Seth, like, this entire LP so far? Yes, and actually it's because, uh, we need him for something. Something really stupid, but we still need him. Actually, I kinda wanna throw loot in also, so maybe drop... Vanessa, because we aren't really using Vanessa. So, yeah, this should be good. Okay, it's so got a village down here. Got a village up here, and a village up here. Because these are soldiers and not brigands, they won't be destroying the villages as far as I'm aware, so we should be safe. Got a item shop here. Got a costume here if we need levels, we'll go into that later. And an armory, we may need to stock up, so... Going in without, uh, actually, no, Seth up front. Actually, Seth where loot is. Loot where, no. Okay. Back on topic, the reason this is considered one of the hardest chapters to this point is because we actually have to recruit a bad guy, which is easier said than done. Which is why we have Seth at sort of as a, what they call a meat shield. So much of my dreams of making my fortune here. First the girl, now the gold. It really isn't my lucky day. You now mercenary, what are you doing here at the arena? Come back to, to the staging area now. Come on, why don't we both at the arena? It'll be good training. If you're going to risk your life anyway, you may as well try to earn some gold. I'm reporting you to the captain. It'll be lucky if he just docks your pay. Don't forget, you're going to be replaced in an eye blink, you filthy cell sword. Don't worry, little man, I won't forget. Works work, but I don't like fighting women. Now then, what's the rest of the day got in store for me? Tails, huh? That's nothing but bad luck and more bad luck. You may not want to hear what I have to say, but I must speak with one of the Grider soldiers. Although, if only one of them will listen to my words. Please, grant me strength. That's a hint, if I've ever seen one. So, Seth has no items. He's also level 1. So, we gotta check movement. So, luckily for us, Joshua, who's named, uh, has very limited turn movement compared to the others. So if I move... oh wait, what's this guy? If I move Seth approximately here, I think? Yes, I'm out of his range. So, we should be able to do this. This is kind of a dicey chapter, I'd say. Also, for levels, I'm gonna have Gilliam go up, because he'll be able to tank everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna have him go solo up there. It's a little bit weird, but again, I think uh, it's good to get your knight up, your knight's levels up as soon as possible, uh, because they will be your main barrier. So Seth is going to take a beating here, but that's not a surprise to anybody. Uh, also, sometimes enemies will directly engage you. In this chapter, I think they say put until you actually get close to them. I take that back. Um, so this is actually a little bit dicey, I would say, recruiting Joshua, because this is actually our first time recruiting a character who is a villain, or not a villain, a character who is in the Grotto army. Look at this, now's a chance! Come on, lads, let's join the fight and steal our way through this pathetic town. So, oddly enough, this guy has a portrait. Uh, because he actually talks in a cutscene, but not because he's actually story relevant. Uh, a little quirk of Fire Emblem. Most of the time, if a character has a portrait, that means they're important. That's not the case in this game, unfortunately. So again, we're gonna try to level up characters as much as possible. So... Oh, snap, that's not good. Um, Franz can take these guys. Uh, or at least delay them enough. Uh, yeah. Oddly enough, uh, this guy doesn't even get a name, despite having a portrait. So that's a little bit of a weird inconsistency. And Erica can also probably fend these guys off pretty sufficiently. Uh, put Colm here, and thus... Nimi can safely take out this guy. Wow, that was easy. So yeah, see why I like archers? Because they're just really powerful once you actually level them up. It's just a question of 
it's taking forever to actually level them up. Okay. Uh, I've kind of dug my own grave to some extent, because uh, now Naomi is actually in the line of fire for an attack, so that's gonna end well. Uh, the way the AI works is they almost always will go after archers, because archers don't have any way to protect themselves. It's really cowardly, I know. Uh, no honor, but uh, it is true. So, oh. But if I move Seth, then Naomi will get, no, Luke will get pummeled. So, yeah. And Natasha, I'm gonna keep as close to the party as I can. Uh, because, again, we need to actually talk to Joshua. Actually, he may go for Seth, because Seth has no wep- oh. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised by that, and luckily, Naomi's speed is at a good enough level now that she can actually survive. Seth is gonna get really beat up this chapter, and I feel really bad for the fact that we only use Seth to get beat up. But it is actually true that Seth, just his gains are not good compared to Franz. Oh hey, they're going after Erica. that's lucky because their hit chance is even lower against Erica. And again, Steel Sword, so she doesn't get your attacks. Again, you have to strategy so much if you want to level up your party evenly, that it's really fun. Uh, Fire Emblem, I would say is probably- okay. This is complicated. I have a lot of nostalgia for Mario, but I think I actually like the Zelda franchise more. So I'd go Zelda, Mario, probably after that, Fire Emblem, Pokemon, uh, which is not really a true Nintendo franchise, because it's technically Game Freak. Uh, so a little technicality. And Pikmin. Actually, maybe switch Pikmin. Nah, yeah, Pikmin would probably be number five. Uh, did I say Fire Emblem in there at all? <laughs> Actually, yeah, like, just to reiterate, in case I accidentally slipped up and said the wrong thing, yeah, like, uh, Fire Emblem would be like number three after Zelda and Mario, just because Mario is very nostalgic. But I actually really like the Fire Emblem series. I wish more of them would be released elsewhere, <laughs> but that's not going to happen anytime soon, it seems. Okay, I'm going to move loot here, uh, and snipe this guy. Oh, actually no. Um, huh, this is actually a little bit of a tricky spot here, because actually I think moving Franz to the front lines would actually be a better move, so I'm actually gonna have loot take out this guy. So yeah, this is uh, actually a fun project because it's kind of different, because instead of just rambling like I sometimes do, I actually have to sort of discuss strategy, and that's actually been really fun. Colm can actually take out this guy, I think. No supports already, so just wail on this guy. But again, be being able to just sort of go over strategies is actually kind of fun, and sort of different. In fact, one problem with this last play is actually I don't have enough downtime compared to usual. As odd as that sounds. So we got two mages now, so we might as well put them to use. Uh, it's also a very viable uh, strategy of sorts, if you want to save time, to turn off the healer's animations. And options, you can actually set units uh, animations by uh, character. So like Natasha and Mulder, you could turn off their animations. To me, that feels like a lot of work. So, uh, and also it's, it's stylish. We're not in any hurry. Again, like I said, I'm not worried about time limit for this LP, so we might as well just show the animations. For stuff like Paper Mario, I wanted to keep a stricter time limit because, frankly, Paper Mario is a more well, to put it bluntly, it's a lot less self-contained. Oh snap, I just realized I did a bad, um... And... oh. Oh, that's actually really bad. Uh, I hope Colm can take an arrow to the face, because he's gonna get one. Okay. Ah, uh, we're already at 14 minutes, so yeah. Uh, you'll very quickly find out that the chapters get really long in this game. Not a complaint, mind you, it's just an observation that, yeah, if we actually cut it at 20 minutes, each chapter by the end game would take like a good three or four episodes, uh, the way I play. A lot of people speedrun Fire Emblem, and apparently speedrunning Fire Emblem is a miserable experience. 
uh, 1 year in HDQ, I think. Our awesome games done quick. Uh, someone did a speedrun of Fire Emblem and had like the worst possible RNG constantly. And the run was kind of a train wreck and they kind of shelved Fire Emblem. Uh, I think they did do another Fire Emblem years later, but uh, the first one didn't exactly leave a good taste in people's mouths, so yeah. Yeah, not a good speed game. Okay, so got a lot of just waiting. I think you can actually skip it, skip enemy turns, or speed up enemy turns, or I may be thinking Awakening. In Awakening, I know you can actually press start and actually skip enemy uh, turns, which is actually really convenient. Archer versus Archer, oh. And that's not a good matchup, actually. So, can I possibly not kill this guy? No, there's no way I cannot kill this guy. Set him. Hmm, this is actually a predicament. Just a bit. Let's see. Actually, that'd be a good idea. Hmm. So yeah, just maximizing levels is always, to me, the hardest part of every Fire Emblem. Let's do this, actually. Yeah, this'll work. I thought there were more reinforcements at some point. Also, uh, reinforcement numbers and just general enemy numbers do vary from uh, difficulty to difficulty. From normal to hard, you actually have a lot more to deal with. Also, normal and easy are effectively the same except easy guides you through all the tutorials and stuff. This game just throws you straight in head first, kicking and screaming into the mix. Uh, and I actually prefer it this way. I don't really like the tutorials in Fire Emblem, they are a little bit overbearing. I think would be a good way to put it. But yeah, if you're going for a full completionist route, recruiting villain not villains, Agrado soldiers and also various other opposing soldiers is going to be the wall for you. Because uh the reason this chapter is actually taking this long is just because we're trying to recruit Joshua. If we weren't going for Joshua, uh, this would actually be a really short chapter. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, uh, so again, a slight complaint I do have is that some of the units are really difficult to recruit. And if you think this is bad, it's even worse than the original GBA game. It is absolutely cruel some of the recruitment requirements. Like, for example, if your lord level is under blah, well, then you get this character. If your, like, warrior combined levels is blah, then you get this warrior. Stuff like that. So in the original Fire Emblem, you can't actually get everyone in one run, because it's dependent on the levels of different characters. So, just to make my point even more clear, uh... I would actually have to do like two playthroughs to show everything, which is not going to happen, so it will not be a completionist run for uh, if I ever do the first game in the US, but if I actually play it, I will actually go over all the recruitment requirements, but I just won't show everyone because that's ridiculous. This game, however, has very linear recruitment requirements for the most part. So I feel like I can actually show everything. Okay, exposition aside, um, take you out, just be safe. Uh, exposition aside, and now we're actually in a position where we can actually recruit Joshua. Um, I'm gonna actually have Mulder go down and do some other stuff first though. So I'm gonna position Seth in the forest to boost his evasion. Also, a good thing to note is that, uh, I'll actually demonstrate this. You know how he said that he doesn't like fighting women? Uh, if I'm correct, which I may not be, so I may have to reset, uh, if you actually have Natasha in the range of, uh, Joshua's attacks, if I'm not mistaken, I think I remember reading somewhere that Joshua won't actually attack you. Yep, the logical choice would be to go for the uh, um, the healer because they have such low dodge and defense, but he doesn't like fighting women, so... Especially pretty women, apparently. I just It just reminds me 
of like of something really obscure, so I'm not sure if I should, should say it. But like in uh, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, uh, there's the one character Emma Sky, and uh, with one character Clavier Gavin, like she's constantly referring to him as a glimmerous fop. <laughs> and I don't know why, but that Tasha just seems to fit that descriptor. You, you're that man I met. Are you here to capture me? You've been hired to silence me, haven't you? Yeah, Grav's paying the bill. They want you dead, you know. But don't feel bad, it's all personal. Wait, please. It doesn't matter what happens to me, but you must hear my words. The Emperor of Grado is, is changed. He's not the man he once was. The other nations must be warned before he extinguishes all light from our lands. No offense, but I'm just a mercenary. I don't care about Grado or its Emperor. Everything you say may be true or may be lies. I don't care either way. That's... Even so, killing a beautiful lady like you would leave a bad taste in my mouth. Tell me, do you like to gamble? What? Gambling's what I live for. Even when I lose, I never want to stop. Let's have us a little wager. If you win, I'll believe you. Heads or tails, you call it. You can't... Uh, this is no time for games. Would you rather I get on with the job I was hired for? Heads. No, tails. Alright, so I'm heads and you're tails. Here we go. Which... Which is it? Well, you know, it's tails. You win. Figures. I haven't won anything all day. Well, lady, luck has spoken. Guess I'm on your side now. Are you serious? Yeah, sure I might cheat, but I never won my a bet. It's a rule of mine. I thank heaven. Thank you, blessed light, for your protection. Got nothing against heaven, but I'm right here if you want someone to thank. No? Well, get behind me then. I got to take care of these fools. So Myrmidons are one of my favorite classes in the entire series because they're so overpowered. <laughs> um, Myrmidons are crazy good in these games. Uh, but we won't actually get to see that for a little bit, uh, aka for this turn. Position him there so we can actually see what he's made of. Have Calm go into this little house. Red roofs will typically get you uh, an item. Life in Seraphie has been harder since the Grotto occupation force took over here. Safi has got Minari citizens as well as Grado, but it's been hardest on us. They've singled out families from Minari for the most awful atrocities. Please, Traveler, take the sword. It's an armor slayer. It'll cut through even the strongest armor. Take it and strike down that black hot saw. And we got the armor slayer. Yay for us. Uh, it's like the rapier, except it doesn't work on horseback units. It only works on knights. And also their class up. Which we won't actually be seeing for a little bit. Okay, so we have we're still having uh Gilliam sort of go up from the the back entrance of sorts. Also, you may think I'm leveling up Erica a lot, and it's sort of disproportionate. I do have my legit reasons for leveling up Erica so much. Uh because uh she is our main character, so it's it's kinda good for her to be really powerful, huh? That's my logic in a nutshell. If we had FR, I might actually be using him a lot. It's just how I play Fire Emblem. So Myrmidons are really fast and have a very high crit rate. The Killing Edge Sword, which they often come equipped with, boosts crit rate exponentially. So, not exponentially by definition, because exponential is a lot more than what this actually is, but uh, the Killing Edge is a really good sword, so once we actually get to a point where we can stop, I'm actually going to get rid of it. I want to save it, because it can only be used 20 times. Now 17. So... Wait. Wouldn't it be... Wait, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is... So it can only be used 15 more times. So, I think I'm gonna save it. As long as possible. Oh wow, double hit. With a steel sword. So that means Erica's really leveling up fast. Okay. Um... Now Seth is effectively useless, let's have him go talk to people. In my youth, I was a knight of summer now, and I'll have you know. I have even crossed blades with one of Grado's most famous generals I have. Ah, but I'm an old man now. So I to worry, what if I die without passing all my techniques? So I decided to write down what I've learned in the book, I have it here. You seem like a strong warrior, and be honored if you would accept it. Secret books raise skill. Uh, so we got permanent stat boosting items, sort of like Pokemon. Oh hello, did you come to see me dance? 
I'm sorry, but I just finished a few moments ago. Oh, by the way, would you be interested in one of these items? A wealthy patron left me a small ransom in gifts after watching my performance. You can sell one for gold if you'd like, or use it to improve your skills. I simply cannot carry all of this by myself, so please take this one. Wealth is useless if you can't use it to bring happiness to others, right? Thanks for dropping by. Perhaps we'll meet again someday. I think she was in the opening movie, so yeah, we'll probably end up recruiting her at some point. <laughs> Trying to be mysterious and failing. Also, men's staffs are stronger than heel staffs. I should point that out. So again, if we were to use Natasha, I would actually uh, store the men's staff now because it's overkill. Okay, um, now we have the difficult s situation of like, what now? Uh, Franz is actually at a decent level, Joshua's at a decent level, and also one-shots everything. Um, hmm. And I also use Seth's turn. <laughs> I can't even use him as a decoy because I already used up his turn. Oh man. But yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lure them all over with Seth and then actually attack them. Yeah, we're leveling up Gilliam really fast and that's a strategy of mine. Uh, it's on purpose, in other words. It's not just like, oh man, disproportionate levels for the win. Uh, it is actually a legit strategy to get uh, knights leveled up as fast as possible. Because they class up into generals, typically. Which are one of the stronger classes in the game, early game. So, they're kind of broken. Therefore, I want one. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Actually, I kind of like having overpowered characters. So, what turn are we at? Uh, 8? Yeah, turn 8, these guys spawn in. So, yeah. If you actually kill a guy, or kill the boss really fast, of course, you actually miss out on a ton of spawns. Uh, but why would you? It's a good experience. Uh, yeah, Seth will be able to survive one. Actually, only two will be able to attack him, so yeah, he'll be able to tank that. And then this guy, okay, so we're good. Get that. And actually, end this turn. We're gonna go way over 30 minutes this video, and I apologize for that, but uh, it's just easier to have all the chapters contained to one video. I think. I would imagine a lot of people would prefer having this kind of structure, actually having, you know, one chapter per video so you can easily look up which level. Okay, Loot is still only level 2, so actually let's use her. She probably won't get a crit, but also, uh, I could always finish him up. Oh. Okay, prove me wrong, why don't ya? I mean, not that I'm complaining, because Loot could use the level, but still, <laughs> prove me wrong. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong in a RNG-based game. What was it, like 2% and it went through? Uh, such as the joys of Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, if it wasn't for the broken RNG, it wouldn't be a Fire Emblem. That sounds really horrible, by the way. But it's actually a little bit true that uh, bad RNG is kind of a staple of the series. It's, it's, it's even worse sometimes when you get like a hit and you have like 10%. Uh, I've been watching streams of one game, I think it's called Monster Rancher 2. And wow, that is not a fair game. Like a 10% hit chance and you like get critical with it. Not fun. I actually want to play Monster Rancher now because of watching these streams. It looks fun, except it's only on the PSN in Japan. And copies I imagine are pretty pricey because of how old the game is. So, uh, Colm actually classes up into a class called the Assassin, which is one of the best classes, uh, for a lot of reasons. It's very similar to a movement on, in terms of being very high crit chance and high speed rate, uh, but has the added advantage of being able to have thief skills. Wow, this is a whole lot of exposition in this video. I, I do sometimes feel like I overdo it sometimes, but at the same time, I'm saying time a lot. Uh, at the same time, this is a very front-loaded game occasionally, where you have a ton of stuff go up down all at once. Not that that's a bad thing, I should clarify, because I actually like games that keep new mechanics 
uh, that sort of gradually introduce mechanics rather than just dropping them all simultaneously. Some games actually do that. And some do it well, others don't do it well. Banjo. Banjo Kazooie gives you the option to either watch the tutorial or go through all the tutorials or to just skip them. That's really nice. If you choose to skip the tutorials, you're given all of your base moves from the get-go, and it's just overall really nice. Uh, other games don't handle it quite so well, where they do actually have a ton of mechanics and they don't tell you about them. Like, I remember Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon having this issue of having like a dodge feature. There's nowhere in the game where they actually say you can dodge attacks, so... Uh, yeah, I didn't actually know about that for the longest time. I, I've i seen a Let's Play of Dark Moon where they said the same thing though, where they basically said that they didn't even know, <laughs> so that makes me feel better. And even people who are good at the game don't even know about it. Hope everyone's well back home in Silva, just a bit more, and I'll be in the Empire. Let's see, I've got vulnerabilities, antitoxins, I mean I can't let myself forget torches for when it gets dark. Yep, I'm all set. Now I just need to get to the capital. I'll be the finest soldier the Grado Army's ever seen, I swear it. And what's this? Yeah, I should drop the torch. We'll be needing that very shortly, so keep that in mind. Now, I honestly don't remember if this is a movie boss or not. Uh, or if this is a stationary boss. I think he's stationary, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I can't find out at a, at a glance. So, until I do, I'm gonna keep some of my units kind of back, just in case. But also in range, in case he does move. Okay, he is indeed stationary. So, he's got two weapons. Or he has one weapon. I thought he had two, but he only has one. So, Armor Slayer, the Armor Slayer we picked up would actually be pretty good against this guy, so... What rank is it? Where is Calm? Rank D... Is he rank D yet? He's C, okay, so Joshua would be a good option. Franz is not a good option, sadly. I should give Franz a better sword at this point. Move him up, and move him up there. Also, magic is good against uh, this kind of thing, so I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna attack because she can't finish him off, and if she doesn't dodge, she's gonna die on the boss's turn. So that's a strategy of intentionally not getting to attack him. Enemy of the Empire, that's too good for you. Well, excuse me for existing. Oh uh, yeah. So again, if that had not missed. It would've only have taken- if he had gotten two javelin throws successfully, she would be dead. So that's why I intentionally did not want to, uh, risk it. Thief- oh, she's still not at a very high level. Calm can do nothing. Uh, 12... Uh, what does Joshua do against this guy? 5... So yeah, that'd probably kill him. Gilliam can't actually kill him, so let's use Gilliam. I am amazed that I actually missed. 68 isn't that bad. Uh huh. Erica? Steel sword. I can't even kill him with a crit. It would have to take a crit to actually kill him. 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, 6 times. Wait. 2 times. Blah. Plus 2 is 8. So it would have had to have been 2 crits to actually get that off. Also, safe scumming doesn't work. Uh, if you do a, a restore point in the Wii U version. Often, you'll find that that does nothing. Fun fact, I tried this in the original game. I, I created a restore point, fought a boss, died, reloaded the restore point, and the exact same outcome. So it is fixed from the moment, the, like from the turn itself. Uh, so yeah, that's to me very fascinating. Uh, maybe I'm just a nerd, but I find that kind of stuff very fascinating. Anyway, we're almost done with this chapter. I'm kind of farming. A little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit, and have Luke finish him off for good measure. 
Emperor Vygod, glory to his majesty. And level up. Not a full level because it went from 48 to 35. Uh, I don't want to do math right now though, so I won't actually crunch numbers of how much experience I actually got. That was a tight spot. Yes it was, thank you so much. I don't know how to repay. You're from Grano, aren't you? Yes, my name is Natasha. I was a servant of the people at Grotto's Imperial Temple. Then why the trouble with the soldiers? Would you tell us your story? Of course. A few days passed, my mentor was arrested without warning. They executed him. They said he was a traitor. But those were false accusations. The Emperor had him killed. A holy man. To keep him silent. Keep him silent? As my mental mentor told me with his final breath, the Emperor plans to destroy the sacred stones. Sacred stones? Destroy them? As you must know, the sacred stones drove back the power of evil long ago. Even now, each of our nations is home to one of these legendary treasures. Just one in my homeland grotto and one in your... Runai. Yes, the sacred stone of Runai is still housed in our royal temple. The Emperor plans to destroy the five stones one by one. Why would he do such a thing? Legend says the sacred stones are even now all that keeps evil at bay. I cannot begin to guess his motives. You must know our Emperor was a gentle man, but one day he changed, utterly. Before my mentor died, he said the keepers of the sacred stones must be warned. I tried to slip across the border, but the soldiers spotted me. Is that what happened? What do you think, Seth? I think we can trust no one from Grotto, not in these times, not without proof. However, if what she says is true, we cannot ignore the danger we face. Destroying sacred stones, we cannot allow that to happen. I agree, if only we knew if there were some reason for the Emperor's actions. I must tell you, her story chills me to the bone. I pray it is false. A moment please, are you by chance Princess Erica? I am. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. I can't tell you how happy I am. And please accept that, accept my gratitude for driving off that Captain Tsar. That Tsar treated all the citizens of Renai with such contempt and brutality. Not here, not in this city. My brother and I spent such happy times here with Lion. I beg your pardon? But it will not be long before Karada sends more troops. Uh, please, you must go quickly. I'm so sorry. There's nothing I can do for you, now. Please forgive me. Do not be troubled, Princess Erica. You must survive and wait for the day of liberation to come. There will come a day when you, Prince Ephraim, and all of an eye rise up. Till that day of glory comes, we will wait unbound and filled with hope. Guiding Ring. This is used to class up magic characters. Um, I'm actually going to save for once and actually cut ahead because we actually get a hidden chapter. Sadly, we can't do that until next time. So, thank you for watching and I hope you join me next time for more Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones.